this is Hua. It is a great day to be here with you all again. I am here to read part three of Lethal Kisses. Part one and two can be found in the videos below. And if you have not subscribed yet, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button. I hope that you enjoy the story. Leave me a comment if you love it. Enjoy. Threats. Galen knew Leonard too well to know that he would use threats against Kristen, and she would cave, because if she didn't, Leonard wouldn't get what he wanted. He had begun searching for homes in the States, and he seriously wanted to put a ring on her finger, just so that Leonard would get the picture that she was no longer his to mess with. But he was also afraid that Kristen would be pushed away if he did that. He needed to take things slow. But first a visit to the county jail where Leonard was awaiting trial. He had gone to visit the prison wards in England, but not in the States. He found the prisoners were treated much too kindly here. Back where he was from, it was either piss in the corner or wet your pants. He signed in, and after a while, Leonard was brought to the other side of the window. Leonard's face was still decorated with Galen's beating, but a new fresh cut was above his eyebrow one he wished he took credit for. The two men picked up the phones to talk. Looks like you're not making friends in jail either, Galen said, pointing to his eyebrow to show Leonard the injury he carried. Leonard laughed. <laughs> what does it matter to you? It doesn't. I'm here to tell you to leave Kristen the hell alone. Or what? You'll beat me into a pulp again? I should have killed her. Galen's blood ran cold, and he sat up, the anger spilling from his heart as he spoke. You touch her again, and I'll kill you. Is that a threat? Smiling, Galen replied, I don't have to threaten you, Leonard. I'm friends with a very well-known judge who will put you away for a very long time. This had Leonard's smile fading, and he leaned back in his chair. Why her? Why my wife? Ex-wife. Galen said through clenched teeth. Have you forgotten what the hell you put her through? I haven't. But why must you pick her out of all the women in the world? You're rich. You're filthy handsome. You can get any woman you damn want. Did you forget that we're friends? Galen laughed. <laughs> friends? We're not friends. Not anymore. Oh, so as soon as you lay with my wife in bed, we're not friends anymore? Ex-wife, Galen shouted. Get that through your thick skull, Leonard, or do I have to beat it into you again? She's your ex-wife, and she doesn't want you around. What you did to her has made her hate you even more. Why are you even here? Are you here to warn me or something? Galen watched as Leonard gave him a cocky smirk, and he wished that he could reach over and knock it off his face. But he controlled his emotions and tightened the grip on the phone. Losing his cool here would do him no good, and if he ended up in jail, Kristen would be without protection. I'm here to tell you to stay the hell away from her. Oh, gee, I'll check my schedule, Galen. I'm in jail. How the hell will I even get close to her? You know what I mean. You're lucky that you're still sitting there with all your teeth. If I had it my way, you'd be counting your missing teeth with a calculator. Galen turned the water off and walked to the living room where Kristen was sitting, drinking her cup of tea. He put his hands on the couch and leaned forward, smiling, liking the look he saw. She was wearing a pink sweater with gray sweats, and her hair was down, long and beautiful as he loved. Her bruises were beginning to fade to a yellow on her cheeks, and when she turned to catch him looking at her, her eyes flickered a look of seduction that moved his guts with a pull he wasn't prepared for. She set her cup down and stood up, turning to face him. What is that look for? she asked with a smile. He shrugged. Nothing. I'm just enjoying the view in front of me. She walked to kneel on the couch and touched his nose with a finger. So you say. 
He smiled. Come on, I drew you a bath. Let me soothe those muscles of yours. He rounded the corner, picked her up in his arms as she squealed and headed toward the bathroom. He set her down, and as he reached for the hem of her sweater, she backed out of his reach. He looked at her with inquisitive eyes. She shook her head as he began closing the door. You're not welcomed in here. If you come in here, I want you to be in the tub with me, she said. He laughed and put the toilet seat cover down. He sat over it and rubbed his chin. I'm not getting in the tub with you, sweetheart. I'm here to enjoy the show. The ray of the moon shone through the curtains of Kristen's room, and she caught it kissing Galen's arms. The man was a huge flirt. He had sat and watched her bathe the entire time, his eyes roaming over her body and raising his eyebrows as he enjoyed the show. But he was her life savior. He truly was. Because without him, she wouldn't be here. He told her of his visit to see Leonard, and although she hated that he hadn't shared it before going, a part of her was glad he did go, even if it was to go threaten the man. Since the incident, she thought long and hard at what Galen had said to her, that Leonard would come back with threats to make her do what he wanted. The pre-trial was coming up soon, and she knew that her grandfather would push to make him stay behind bars as long as possible. The pain of what he did gave her nightmares, and she found herself waking up covered in sweat and crying out for help. Galen had been there to hold her and comfort her back to sleep, but he had been right. Threats would be given from him to make her give in, to torture her, and to make her lose Galen. He knew all that because he knew Leonard better than she did. She knew one thing, and that was that she was afraid of Leonard. After what he showed her what he was capable of doing, her thoughts of him shifted from hate to fear. Although hate was still a large percentage of her feeling, the fear part was beginning to win over it. He showed her that he was unafraid to take her life from her and that she truly meant nothing to him. This was what scared her and had her looking over her shoulders, even though he was sitting in jail. Her grandfather wasn't going to be the judge sitting on the day of trial due to conflicts of interest, so another man would be hearing her case. And although Corwin would try to push for the most lengthy of time behind bars, Kristen also knew how the law worked. He could get out sooner than expected and do just community service. Taking a deep breath, she also knew what that would do with her relationship with Galen. She would be putting him in danger as well. And although he would say he was strong, she also knew now what Leonard could do to someone he hated. Where did this leave her? Where did this leave her relationship with Galen? Would she forgive herself if something were to happen to him? This was what Galen meant about threats coming to her. Although she answered confidently to him the other day, she knew now the worries he spoke of during that moment. Would she end up caving in? Galen hated the thought of having Kristen sit in the courtroom with Leonard. The day of the pre-trial hearing arrived, and he was all messed up with his feelings. He tried to gather together his courage so he would appear confident in front of her. But honestly, he was at a loss of words. He had no clue what would happen because Corwin was not allowed to be the judge. And although he had tried to push for harsher grounds, Galen knew that things didn't always work out like planned. Kristen was emotional, and she tried to give him a brave smile when she finished dressing, but he saw the pain in her eyes. He recognized it because inside of him, he held the same pain. The courtroom had a handful of people waiting for their hearing case to come up. The judge, Honorable Judge Brandon Trill, was sitting at the front with his white hair and large glasses on his face when Galen entered with Kristen on his arms. Her lawyer, Scott James, was already seated at the front with her grandfather. Scott was a tough cookie, and although he was a rookie lawyer, 
he had already won enough cases to back up his credits for being a mean winning streak. Corwin suggested him because of that, and also because he'd seen the man in action in the courtroom. Scott came to court looking like a Hollywood star, and next to Corwin, the two looked like two people you'd hate to be going against. Leonard was sitting at the other table with a public defender who was a woman wearing an ugly olive-colored suit. She was an older woman with large glasses and a short bob around her circular face. And Christian was right. Orange was not a suitable color on Leonard. When they neared the front, Leonard turned and gave them a cocky grin as Christian shuddered beside him and took a seat next to her grandfather. Galen took a seat behind them as the judge ruled the court in order. Court is in session. Today is docket number 239980, Leonard Stetter versus Kristen Lindell for domestic assault. Both parties are here and so are their legal representatives. We will start with defendant Leonard Stetter and his public defender, Brandon said. The woman identified herself as Nancy Gray and began speaking. Your Honor, we move to allow bail for my client. He is not a threat to anyone. Scott stood up. Objection, Your Honor. He's a threat to my client. Do I need to show you photos of what he did to her? Nancy gave him an ugly glare. Your client is a whore who slept with his best friend. Galen could not believe his ears as Brandon shouted out Nancy for name-calling. Counselor Gray, I am disappointed in your poor choice of words. You are a woman yourself and a legal representation of the law. Use your words wisely or I will hold you in contempt. Nancy's face flushed. I apologize, Your Honor. We'd like bail to be set. Denied, Brandon said. Move on. Nancy sighed deeply and glared at Kristen before continuing. Your Honor, if you don't allow bail, how will my client continue to make ends meet? He's got a business to run, and he's got things he must do in order to keep up his life. Bail denied, Counselor. If you have nothing else to say, I will close your case and move on to the next. Your client is a harm to the community at the moment. Bail denied. He will sit in jail until his trial. Until then, I suggest you get better word vocabulary into your lips, counselor. Prosecutor Scott, what are your terms? Nancy sat down, defeated, as Scott stood up. We agree with the no bail your honor has so stated. My client also requests a restraining order against the defendant's family members to come close to her. Granted, your trial will be set for three weeks from now. Dismissed. Scott shook hands with Corin and Kristen, then turned to shake Galen's as he gathered up his items and left. Galen saw the glare that Leonard gave them as he was taken away. Nancy didn't dare look their way as the three of them passed her to walk out of the courthouse. The warm water that overfilled the tub had Kristen feeling drowsy with sleep. The candles had burned down to the bottom of the wax and her hands and feet were turning into prunes. Today's court session had her realizing what a reality of fear Leonard could become into her life. She'd been flipped upside down, and everything was coming fast to her. The thought of losing her normal life haunted her. So, this was what it was like to fear a man you used to be married to, and all because she found new love. Wait, was it even love? Maybe it was just lust. Maybe it was just a spur-of-the-moment kind of thing. Galen was great. No, 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 no. That's offending to the man. He was magical there. He was, and he'd done almost everything to help her rise up again after her fall. But did she want to put him into such a position. She heard the door open and close, the patter of heavy footsteps, and then Galen appeared by the doorway, wearing a black blazer with a white V-neck t-shirt with a pair of stone-washed jeans. This look screamed seduction all over, and she felt instantly warm 
in the tub of her water that was already turning cold. Hello, he said with a smile. You look lovely. Mind if I join you? He began reaching for his blazer, and she stood up. Reaching for the towel to wrap around her, she stepped out, and his eyes questioned her actions. Galen, let's talk, she said as she walked out of the bathroom. He followed her gaze and grabbed her arm, turning her around. The look he had in his eyes already told her he knew what she was going to talk about. I told you this would happen, Kristen. You assured me you were strong and that you could handle this. My heart and soul believed you. Please don't tell me you're going to betray your words. She felt the tears prick her eyes, and when he reached for her, she moved out of his hold. Kristen looked up with a sad gaze and covered her arms. Galen, I know what I said, and at the moment, I agreed to your words. I didn't realize the terror of the reality I would end up facing. Leonard's threats are getting to me, and today, in the courtroom, I got a taste of it. I don't want to put you in a situation where you will get hurt. Galen shoved his hands through his hair. Give me some credit, will you? I can handle a leech like Leonard. I know you can, but I don't want you to. What if he hurts you? What if, what if he does something to take you away from me? He walked forward and grabbed her shoulders. You are safer with me than being apart from me. Haven't you learned that yet? I can protect you. At the cost of your own life? She asked gently. Galen's eyes turned soft. Yes. She let out a soft cry, and he pulled her into his arms, taking in her scent. They held each other, and she cried into his arms. When he pushed her gently away, he wiped her tears and tipped her chin up to look at his gaze. There, she found a deep look of love and care that she hadn't before. Don't, don't let him win, Kristen. It will gut me if you do. I was worried about this, and I knew he would find a way to get to you. This was what I was afraid of. I'm not going to let you go if you think this will help Leonard stop bothering you. Do you realize that if you and I are not together, if you wound up with another man, he would go after that man too? It's not about me. It is his own damaged self that is going after you. No matter who you choose to be with, he'll come after you until he thinks he can have you to himself again. Why are you letting him win? Kristen sniffed and shrugged her shoulders. Because I'm tired, she said honestly. I'm tired of, of looking over my shoulder and, and tired of thinking that he'll hurt someone else I love. I'm also afraid. She looked up at him. I don't want to lose you. But if losing you means you'll be safe, then I'll do it. Galen shook his head. Darling, you got this all wrong. If you push me away, then what is all this that we're fighting for? If he's put away for life, but you and I are separated, what is the good in that? She didn't think about that part, and she told him so. He smiled and drew her into his arms. Please, don't push me away, Kristen. I promise you that I'm stronger than I look, and with you by my side, it is the only way that we can beat this snake. Thank you for tuning in. I hope that you are enjoying this story. Look forward to part four shortly.